Hi, I'm Daphne and welcome to my Yin Yoga channel and thanks for coming today. So today we're going to be combining a Yin Yoga practice with a Yoga Nidra practice. So in addition to a bolster, a few blocks, a blanket, you might also want to grab onto an eye pillow. And additionally, I'm not sure how you're oriented in your space today, but I would recommend that you make sure that the long side of your mat is facing me, it's facing the camera. If you're not using your mat, obviously it doesn't matter. Just make sure that you're facing me. That's gonna be helpful as we are making transitions in today's practice, okay? So let's begin. First, I want you to grab your bolster and then pull that over to the right short edge of your mat, if you're using a mat, horizontally across. And then very slowly, before you come down, grab your blocks. Just make sure that you have them within arm's reach, easy access. And then you're going to recline so that your upper body, your shoulder blades are landing right on top of the bolster. And then let your arms drape over the top, like the armpits over the top of the bolster, and just allow the arms to fluidly, gracefully relax at your sides. And if this is not comfortable for your neck, take a block, place it underneath the back of your head, and then make any wiggles you need to in your body to adjust and get comfortable and close your eyes and begin to fall into your body. Feel your breath. Let it begin to slow and try to let the exhales be a mechanism for release in your body so that every time you're taking an exhale, you maybe feel a nice, subtle shift into deeper relaxation. And listen closely. Today I'm flying low and I'm not saying a word. I'm letting all of the voodoos of ambition sleep. The world goes on as it must. The bees in the garden rumbling a little. The fish leaping the gnats getting eaten, and so forth. But I'm taking the day off, quiet as a feather. I hardly move, though really I'm traveling a terrific distance. stillness, one of the doors into the temple, stillness, one of the doors into the temple. I love that Mary Oliver poem the words are very soothing and I feel as though I have 
permission to sink into that stillness and to begin to really appreciate that idea and that sense of total solitude within the body. You can remain as you are with your legs straightened in front of you, or if you like, begin to bring the soles of your feet together and let your knees open out to the side for this reclined half butterfly, not half butterfly, full butterfly with the back bend. If this feels uncomfortable for your hips and your blocks are within easy reach or your books, maybe you place something underneath each of your thighs. Come back to your breath. And take a deep inhale and a slow, complete exhale. If you've taken your reclined butterfly variation, you can start to straighten your legs back down to the ground. And then move your hips over in one direction, doesn't matter which direction, and then roll your body in the opposite direction so that you roll completely over to your belly. You might have to adjust a little bit. And the bolster should be positioned right underneath your upper body so that you can place your forearms in front of the bolster for your sphinx pose. And again here, make any adjustments that you need to if you don't like the bolster underneath your body. Move it out of the way. If you need some support for the weight of your head, use your block to rest your forehead on. And then adjust the legs and the arms according to what sensation you're feeling in your lower back. So if you think you're getting too much compression in your lower back, then widen your legs. Maybe you widen the arms and move them forward a little bit. Taking the time at the beginning of your shape to find where that sweet spot is. And then come back to your breath.
it's possible that because I'm in my home studio that you may be aware of some external sounds that are occurring outside and see if you can just let that buzz, that din of sound, if it occurs, be part of the tapestry of your practice. And now you can remain in your Sphinx pose, or if you want to move into a deeper edge, take yourself up into seal, and you'll press through the palms to lift and straighten the arms off of the ground. That's going to lift your upper body. If you do that, maybe you adjust the bolster a little bit further underneath your upper body underneath the ribs for some support. And if you feel like this is too much and you still have the bolster, instead, just prop your forearms on top of the bolster. And if you chose to move into either of those two variations, just make sure that you bring your attention back to the lower body and release any tension or contracting that occurred as you moved from one position to the other. And then come back to your breath. Let your shoulders relax here. And that may mean that they shrug up toward your ears. That's okay if that happens. And take a deep inhale and a slow, complete exhale. Come back to your normal breath. Release your upper body for a moment and then very slowly press yourself up and back into a tabletop position. And then we're going to move into Melting Heart. So you have your bolster in front of you, probably. If not, that's okay. Move it in front of you because you might, as you start to move your arms forward and lower them down to the ground, keeping your hips lifted, 
letting your upper body melt toward the ground. That bolster may give you some nice support. And if not, slide the bolster out of the way. Come into your melting heart without that support. And again, make any adjustments that you need to. If this feels like it's too much on your shoulders, take the threaded needle variation, sliding one arm underneath your body over to the opposite side, and letting that arm fall down to the ground, allowing the opposite arm to be soft, and then come back to your breath. And for anyone who took the threaded needle variation, I'll be sure to let you know when to switch sides. And in your melting heart, your heart is literally melting toward the ground. So I want you to definitely feel that release in the upper body and notice how that affects your lower body. So the lower back in particular. You should feel a sort of companion melting and release of the lower spine as well. And if you took your threaded needle version of this melting heart, very slowly now switch to the opposite side, releasing the arm that you have on the ground and then sliding the opposite arm underneath your body. Make your adjustments. Come back to your breath. And take a deep inhale and a slow, complete exhale. 
And if you've threaded one of your arms underneath, release it. And then start to sink your hips back toward your heels, coming into a child's position. Knees close together, knees wide apart. The arms can relax in front of you or maybe at your sides. Or if you have another arm variation in your child's pose, take that instead. And then just come back to your breath. And the next time that you inhale, bring yourself up into tabletop position. So we're going to move into a sleeping swan. And at this point, I'm going to be mirroring you. So from here, I want you to step your right foot up in between your hands and start to slide it over to the left as you lower that leg down to the ground and straighten the left leg behind you. So make some adjustments here and before you settle in, notice where you're feeling the sense of tugging, pulling, stretching sensation. And so here you might want to place a blanket underneath the knee of the straight leg if that's not comfortable. Maybe you have a blanket or a block underneath the right hip to support you here. Adjust the front leg according to where you're feeling this, how much you want to feel. It's not necessary to try to get the shin of the front leg parallel to the mat. You don't really necessarily have to worry about flexing the foot. So make that adjustment. And then take an inhale to lift and lengthen through the spine. And as you exhale, draw the upper body forward. You may not go down all the way. Maybe you just rest on your forearms, kind of like you do in a sphinx pose. And then maybe you use a block here as well to support the weight of your head. It's also an option to use the bolster. And finally, if having the legs straightened behind you is really uncomfortable, the option is to take this into a baby swan. So you'll just slide that straight leg out to the side as you bend it, make some adjustments, and then come into this baby swan. And if you've taken that version, you may be able to adjust the right leg forward a little bit and then that may help you to get into a deeper edge, if it's appropriate for you, in the right hip. And then come back to your breath.
if as you become acclimated to your shape here, you might find in this case that your right body is rolling further over to the right and you might normally feel compelled to try to adjust yourself to remain centered but that's not necessary in this yin sleeping swan you kind of want to go with the flow of your body so if you find yourself rolling over to the right side a little bit and that feels okay, then allow that to happen. And take a deep inhale and exhale completely. And inhale to begin to rise very slowly. And then you're going to turn your body, rotate your upper body as you rise to face me, to face the camera and your left leg should be straddled out to the side. Your right leg remains bent in front of you. So a couple of options here. You're either going to fold right down the center or maybe you fold over the bent knee or if you prefer, you can adjust your upper body to rotate toward the straight leg and fold over the straight leg instead. And finally, if you prefer, especially if you're folding to center or if you're folding over the straight leg, maybe you switch the bend of your right leg and fold it behind you, okay? So take an inhale to lift and lengthen and an exhale to take your fold either center or over the straight leg or if you've kept the right leg folded in front of you maybe you fold over that bent knee and then come back to your breath If you're feeling uncomfortable in any of those variations, take a moment to adjust and make a decision about how you might want to use your props. So I like to put a block sometimes under the knee of my straight leg. It gives me some nice support. If you've kept the opposite leg folded in front of you, that block underneath the knee or the thigh can be helpful or bolster one of my favorite props to give some support either in front of you or on top of the straight leg or in front
in front of the bent knee. So many choices and it's really part of the practice to find the one that works best for you on any given day because every day is going to be different. Bodies change, the way we feel, where we want to get into our bodies, the spaces that we want to challenge, it all changes. to follow your breath. This idea of following the breath often helps to quiet the mind, getting into that place of stillness. And so notice I did not say emptiness. I don't really believe that you can completely empty your mind, but you can still it. And take a deep inhale and a slow, complete exhale. And inhale to rise. And then we're going to take that little mini sequence over to the opposite side. So now you're going to fold your left leg in front as you start to slide and straighten the right leg behind you. Make sure that you've grabbed your props along the way. Find your sleeping swan. Make your adjustments. Take a deep inhale and as you exhale, fold the upper body forward. Position yourself or support yourself and again, I think I mention this often in any of my sequences, the way that you adjust and support yourself on one side may be completely different than what you do on the opposite side. So don't feel like you have to precisely match what you've done on one side with what you're doing now on the opposite side.
and very often what's actually most helpful is to hold yourself back a little bit from your edge and resist the compulsion to collapse deeply into your shape and instead hold back a little bit and really sort of taste the subtleties of your body and how you feel as you move and adjust noting where sensation is occurring and how it feels give yourself time to experience this is very challenging for many people we want to do things quickly and we often come to our practice with a no pain no gain mentality and pain is not at all what we're trying to do here even extreme discomfort is not what we're trying to do here we're trying to find the balance between absolutely nothing and absolutely everything so where is your balance how can you find that within your body And can you identify whether the reaction or how you want to push your body is reflective of how you push yourself or how you react to things or how you avoid or how you go too far in your daily life off the mat out of the practice room into the world And take a deep inhale and a slow, complete exhale. And inhale to rise slowly as you begin to rise. You're rotating your upper body toward me, and you now still have your left leg folded in front of you as your right leg is straddled out to the side taking your forward fold either down the center or over to the bent knee or over to the straight leg or maybe adjusting how you've folded your left leg in front of you. Take an inhale to lift and lengthen and an exhale to take your fold forward.
take a deep inhale <clears throat> and a slow, complete exhale. And inhale to rise. And then straighten both legs in front of you. Just a little brief movement, a little counter movement here. Let your arms, your hands come behind you. And then lift your upper body up toward the sky. If you want to really activate here, press through the palms to Really lift the sternum up and just take a deep inhale. You can adjust your gaze upwards or let your neck, your head fall back. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. And then slowly start to lift your head bring your upper body back, and then bring the soles of your feet to your floor. Widen the feet so that they're a bit wider outside of your hips, and then let both of your legs drop over to one side. See if you can get that inside leg as close to the ground as possible. Lift the upper body up, and exhale here. Inhale the legs back up and then over to the opposite side. Again, see if you can get that inside leg down to the ground. Lift the upper body. And let's do that one more time. Move the legs over to one side. Lift the upper body. And again, over to the opposite side. Lift the body, the upper body come back to center and then from here you're going to straddle your legs as we set up for full dragonfly so you may again in your dragonfly want to support your legs somehow maybe blocks underneath the knees and then you can play around with height adjustments some people keep it on the very lowest some people like to take it to the very highest. Really kind of depends on what your body's feeling like today, where you want to feel this. And so you decide. And I would like also to recommend for today's dragonfly that you bring a bolster or something in front of you because I'm going to offer an arm variation and the bolster may help you to settle into it. So find your straddle, relax your legs, shake them around a little bit if you need to. Cross the right arm underneath the left, rope the lower arms if you can, rope the palms. Take an inhale to lift and lengthen. And exhale to start to fold forward. And then you can less, let your arms rest on top of the bolster. Um, if it's not comfortable for you to keep the rope, then release the lower arms and just keep the elbows crossed here. We're just trying to get a nice stretching sensation in the shoulders and the upper outer arms and see if you can let your head relax over the arms. If a bolster is maybe not giving you or you don't need that support and you can come forward fairly low and then take that option instead and come back to your breath.
usually fairly effortless for me to take a very deep dragonfly. But sometimes it's nice to hold back a little bit and maybe not take as deep of a position and give yourself some extra time to relax and really get into these deeper tissues in a slower, more intentional way. Allowing this sort of sensation of unfolding within your body. And as you unfold a little bit more, feel that accompanying sense of additional opening and release. And if you've taken the arm variation, the next time you inhale, just bring yourself up slightly and switch the fold of your arms the rope of your arms and then bring yourself back down so now the left arm is underneath the right and you're roping if you can or letting the lower arm separate and just keeping the cross of the elbows and come back to your breath And take a deep inhale. 
and a slow, complete exhale. And inhale to rise slowly. And now please come down to your back. It doesn't matter which direction your head is pointed in, whole mirroring aspect is going to be less important now, but just make sure that, again, you have your blocks or your bolster within easy reach. Very slowly, come all the way down, recline on your back. Let the whole body release. Let the whole body release. Giving yourself a minute or so to feel the effects of your practice up until now and just without getting too involved, just observing how you feel. Not trying to analyze or overthink anything, just a nice flow of observation where you maybe notice one physical sensation and you let that go. Or maybe you notice some type of emotional reaction and then you let that go. Or you have a thought and then you let that go. Just a steady stream of noticing and letting go. From your reclined position, bring the soles of your feet to the ground, to your mat. Move the arms closer to the shoulders or the ears or over the head. Widen the feet, widen the knees, and let both of your legs drop over to the left. Taking your spinal twist gentle, effortless rotation here. It might be helpful for you to place a block underneath the inner thigh of your right leg. Or maybe you place the bolster in between your legs. Let your head move to whatever side feels intuitively most comfortable or just let it remain neutral. Come back to your breath. Let your rotation be effortless. So not trying to exert your body in any way. Mm -hmm. 
and twists are among my favorite shapes to take in my body and particularly the yin version of twists for their sustained stillness and the ability to really sink into the feeling of this shape. Usually, if you're in a, a more dynamic yoga class, twists are often the thing that we do toward the end of practice to neutralize, and I always feel like we never remain there for long enough. So it's just a few breaths and I've hardly had a chance to become familiar with what's happening before we're asked to move out of it. <laughs> so the yin rotations give us that opportunity. and take a deep inhale and a slow complete exhale and on your next inhale bring your legs back up and readjust yourself if you need to to center again and drop your legs over to the right take your twist to the opposite side. and take a deep inhale. Exhale slowly. And 
bring your legs back to center and we're going to start the transition into yoga nidra but before we settle in make any movement in your body that feels good some gentle movement nothing too aggressive maybe you bring your knees into your upper body and let yourself rock side to side a little bit or anything that you need to do just a few seconds a few breaths And then when you're ready, bring yourself into a final relaxation position. So it's maybe Shavasana. Maybe you drag your bolster underneath your knees. Maybe you cover yourself up. And if you have your eye pillow and would like to use your eye pillow, place the eye pillow on top of your eyes. Make any movement as you make the transition into final relaxation so that you can adjust, get comfortable, but ultimately doing whatever you need to in order to come to complete stillness. Whatever you can do to help you to remain in stillness as you prepare your body for the practice of Yoga Nidra. Prepare your body. Prepare your mind for the practice of Yoga Nidra. Please know that the goal of Yoga Nidra is not to fall asleep. The goal of Yoga Nidra is to achieve this state of relaxed awareness. So follow the sound of my voice as you are guided through the practice of Yoga Nidra. Now, if you do fall asleep, eh, maybe you need to fall asleep. (laughs) It's okay if that happens, but try to stay above that. And follow the sound of my voice as I guide you through the practice of Yoga Nidra. Bring all of your attention to the crown of your head. Bring all attention to the crown of your head. And let that attention, that awareness, Start to travel down into the eyes. Feel the right eye, the left eye, both eyes together. The eyes falling deeply into the sockets. Become aware of the nose. The cheeks, right cheek, left cheek, the ears, right ear, left ear, jaw, right side of the jaw, left side of the jaw, both sides together. Be aware of your neck, back of the neck, sides of the neck, front of the neck, throat, the notch at the base of your throat, and bring your awareness to the right shoulder, and the right upper arm, the right elbow, the right lower arm, right wrist, right thumb, second finger, third finger, 
fourth finger, fifth finger, back of the hand, palm of the hand, the whole right arm. Let this awareness slowly travel back up the right arm into the shoulder, across the chest, and into the left shoulder, and the left upper arm, left elbow, left lower arm, wrist, left thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, back of the left hand, palm of the left hand, the whole left arm. Feel all of this awareness travel back up the left arm into the shoulder, landing once again at the notch at the base of your throat. Feel this energy now pour into your heart center, diaphragm, right side waist, left side waist, navel, your root, the pelvis, right hip, right upper leg front of the thigh, back of the thigh, right knee, front of the knee, back of the knee, the right lower leg, front of the lower leg, back of the lower leg, the right ankle, the heel, top of the right foot, sole of the right foot, the right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, the whole right leg. Bring all of this awareness slowly back up the right leg into the right hip across the pelvis into the left hip. Feel the left hip, the left upper leg, front of the thigh, back of the thigh, the left knee, front of the knee, back of the knee, the left lower leg, front of the lower leg, back of the lower leg, the left ankle, left heel, top of the left foot, sole of the left foot, the left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, the whole left leg. Feel the whole left leg. Feel the right foot once again. Feel the left foot, both feet together. Right ankle, left ankle, both ankles together. Right lower leg, left lower leg, both lower legs together. Right knee, left knee, both knees together. Right upper leg, left upper leg, both upper legs together. The right hip the left hip, both hips together, pelvis, root, navel, 
diaphragm, the right side waist, the left side waist, both side waists together, heart center, throat center, collarbones, right shoulder, left shoulder, both shoulders together, right upper arm, left upper arm, both upper arms together, right elbow, left elbow, both elbows together, right lower arm, left lower arm, both lower arms together, right wrist, left wrist, both wrists together, right hand, left hand, both hands together, the whole right arm, the whole left arm, both arms together throat, notch at the base of your throat, back of the neck, sides of the neck, right side of the neck, left side of the neck, both sides of the neck together, right ear, left ear, both ears together right jaw, left jaw, both jaws together, right cheek, left cheek, both cheeks together, the nose, right eye, left eye, both eyes together third eye, forehead, crown of the head, the right side of the body. Feel the entire right side of the body, the left side of the body. Feel the entire left side of the body, both sides of the body together, both sides of the body together, feel the whole body, feel the whole body. Maintain this relaxed awareness follow the movement of your breath.
And now begin to become more aware of your breath. You can certainly remain as you are in this final relaxation position, or if you would like to close your practice in a seated position, first begin by deepening your breath. Take a long inhale through the nose and a slow exhale through the nose. And do this one more time. Inhale deeply through the nose. And exhale slowly through the nose. And feel your body now. Start to make some slow, small, gradual movements. Working your way into larger movements. And taking your time at your own pace. Begin to bring yourself back into your seat. And when you arrive, you can let your hands rest on your legs or bring your hands to prayer at heart center. And if you're sitting, I thank you very much. Well, even if you're laying down, I thank you very much. But if you're sitting, you can actually see me thanking you very much for your practice today and for joining me. And if you like the practice, please continue to come back, like this sequence, subscribe to my channel. Please share if you feel the need to do so. And once again, thank you for your commitment to practice. Man me ram. Hafne Kam, keep your head in the world, but your heart in your God. Namaste.